Hi third grade, happy Thursday. We're almost done with our short week. We're halfway through our short week and today for reading again, we're gonna be going over reading a realistic fiction, reading it, talking about it, figuring out our answers. So uh, we are working on this standard today. So the first thing we're gonna do is read the story. The day the lights went out. Remember, now we're just doing the text. We're not gonna have illustrations with it. So, on a steamy hot summer day, Nora and her dad found a place to cool off at the city's Natural History Museum. They were enjoying the dim green undersea room when suddenly the lights blinked off and on. With a final pop, the lights went out completely, leaving the room cloaked in black. Dad, what's going on? Nora called out loudly with a frown on her face. I'm not sure, but we'll wait a minute and see if the lights come back on, Dad said calmly. In a moment, the glow of a flashlight approached. A museum worker waved the flashlight at them. And we're gonna scroll down. Oops, too far. There's a power outage across the city, so we have to close the museum, she said. I'll walk you to the exit. Nora and her dad stopped at Jasper's, their favorite shop for ice cream. What a day, huh? Jasper greeted them, placing a cool towel on his pink forehead. My freezes are out, so come on quick and get your cones. Nora and her dad ordered two cones, but when Nora's dad tried to pay, the owner waved his hand. Forget about it, he said. It'll all be it'll it will all be soup soon anyway. After a long hot walk, Nora and her dad arrived home to find some of their ah, neighbors on the steps outside the apartment building. Everyone looked sweaty, but they were talking and laughing together about the sizzling heat. They were sharing pitchers of ice water. I couldn't stand it in my apartment, Mrs. Fong said, fanning herself with the newspaper. At least out here, there's a little breeze. Another neighbor shrugged. Nora recognized him as the man who lived in the apartment above hers. A woman who lived downstairs was leaning against the doorway, and I just stocked my refrigerator, she said. If the power doesn't come on soon, the the food will go bad and I'll have to throw it all away. I have some meat in the freezer too, said Nora's dad. Maybe I'll use the grill on the roof tonight. It would be nice to cook everything before it spoils. And it's been a while since I've hosted a cookout. The woman in the doorway nodded. I'll see what I have to contribute, she said. I'll make sure to bring enough for everyone. That evening, Nora and her neighbors gathered on the roof. Nora learned that the man from upstairs was named Sergi. I hope I said that right. The downstairs woman was Rachel. As they, oh, sorry. As they finished their dinner, night fell over the city. For the first time in Nora's life, their street became completely dark. She gazed and gasped. Stars blinked overhead, thousands of bright dots in the black sky. She never seen such a sight. The night air was thick and hot, but Nora didn't mind anymore. She had enjoyed free ice cream and she had shared a rooftop dinner with her neighbors. She smiled to herself and continued to watch the stars. So now we're focusing on paragraphs two and three. So we're gonna read our question and our, the answers and then we'll look at the paragraph and discuss and talk about which one we think is the right one. Based on paragraph two and three, how did Nora and her father probably feel about the lights going out? So the first option, Nora and her father both felt feel angry about the lights going out. They are not at all bothered by the lights going out. Nora feels angry that the lights went out and her father feels scared. Nora feels worried go about the lights going out, but her father doesn't. So let's see. Dad, what's going on? Nora called out loudly with a frown on her face. I'm not sure, but we'll wait a minute and see if the lights come back on, Dad said calmly. In a moment, the glow of a flashlight approached. A museum worker waved the flashlight at them. So they both don't seem angry because Nora seems nervous, but her dad is very calm and says, we'll just have to wait. So he does not express any anger about it. They're not at all bothered by the lights. Well, Nora called out loudly with a frown on her face. So she does feel a little worried, but I wouldn't say she's not bothered. So I wouldn't go with that one either. Nora feels angry that the lights went out and her father feels scared. So I could see how we could suggest that Nora was angry. She called out loudly with a frown on her face, but her father feels scared. 
I don't think her father feels scared because her father is very calm and is just saying, we just have to wait. Nora feels worried about the lights going out, but her father does not. This, I would say, would be the best option because Nora does seem worried. She seems angry, a little worried, and her father is very calm, saying, just wait. So I'm going to go with this one. I think that's the best one. This one, I think Nora could feel angry, but I don't agree with the second part. So we're going to go with this one. And we got it. So now we're going to read our question and the answers and then look back. What is the most likely reason why the author mentions that Jasper is placing a cool towel on his pink forehead? To show that Jasper just got out of the shower? To show how hot it is in Jasper's shop? To show that Jasper's shop is dark and gloomy? To show that Jasper is framed? Well, now let's read paragraph five. Nora and her dad stopped at Jasper's, their favorite shop for ice cream. What a day, huh? Jasper greeted them, placing a cool towel on his cool towel on his pink forehead. My freezer's out, so come on quick and get your cones. Nora and her dad ordered two cones, but when Nora's dad tried to pay, the owner waved his hand. So remember, in this story, they're talking about how hot it is outside. That's why the neighbors were outside for the heat and the little breeze. So when we look at this, nothing about how the shower that he came out was talked about um i think they were trying to show how hot it is because they were talking about the heat to show that it's dark and gloomy they didn't really say that the shop was dark that never came up or to show that he's frightened he didn't seem frightened he's just saying get your cones now it's all going to be melted soon so i'm going to go with this one because the heat was talked about in this story so i think that is our best option all right so now what is the woman, we're going to read the question first, talk about the answers. What is the woman in the doorway planning to do? Use the context clues to help figure out the meaning of the word contri contribute. Share food at the cookout. Bring a fan to help people cool off. Teach Nora's dad how to grill. Find a cool place to eat dinner. So now let's read. The woman in the doorway nodded. I'll see what I have to contribute, she said. I'll make sure to bring enough for everyone. So the way that this word is being used is she's going to see what she has to bring. She wants to make sure there's enough food for everyone. She wants to be a part of it. So I think our best answer would be this one because she's talking about, I'm going to see what I have in my, ugh. I'm going to see what I have in my fridge to share and make sure that it's enough for everyone. So she wants to bring food for everyone as well. Awesome. So now let's read our question. What lesson does Nora probably learn at the end of the story? If you wait long enough, all bad things will come to an end. It is important to ask for help when you need it. If you help cook dinner, you get rewarded with free ice cream. You can have a good time when something bad happens. Let's read number six, the paragraph 16. The night air was thick and hot, but Nora didn't mind anymore. She had enjoyed free ice cream and she shared a rooftop dinner with her neighbors. She smiled to herself and continued to watch the stars. Well, if you wait long enough, all bad things come to an end. Well, maybe, but at the end, the light still didn't, the power didn't come back on. So if that was a bad thing, it didn't end yet because the power is still off. So maybe, but I don't feel confident in that. So let's go to the next one. It is important to ask for help when you need it. Well, she didn't ask for help during the story, so I don't think that's the lesson that she would learn. If you help get cook dinner, you get rewarded with free ice cream. But that's not why she got free ice cream, so that one wouldn't make sense. You can have a good time even when something bad happens. So I like this one because I feel more confident in it than the first one because even though the power went out and they couldn't stay at the museum, they were able to spend time with their neighbors and they got free ice cream. So even though something bad happens, there's good things too. So I'm gonna go with this one. And that is it, there's just four questions for each story. So just make sure to take your time reading, read through the story and always double check your answers. And hopefully talking through each answer helps us be more confident into which one is the right one. That is it for today, I will see you tomorrow. Bye third grade.